we need to have a talk. Specifically, I need to have a talk with the people of Florida. Now, generally, the people of Florida, they are, I wouldn't say kind-hearted, but they're good people. But they have a unique aesthetic when it comes to their pickup trucks. That aesthetic is big tires and jacking them up. Now, this may be common throughout the South and other and among other pickup circles, but I don't know that. So I'm going to speak from my experience in that is Florida. This needs to stop. It is getting to dangerous levels of big tires and massive lift kits. I'm talking the point where these, the, the top of the wheel well is at my head. And at what point does a truck just stop being a truck and start to be classified as a monster truck and really shouldn't be allowed on roads? And because this, this came to my attention, um, I noticed while I was walking to class that there was just in a row a series of pickup trucks. Just and it, it was it fitted the I wish it took pictures, but it fitted the form of like the expanding brain meme perfectly. You had like a truck with big tires, and a truck with bigger tires, and a bit of a lift kit, then a truck with really big tires and a sort of a lift kit. And then all the way at the end, with massive tires that were almost about they had to be 36 inches, and a, a lift kit about that big. To the point where the, tr the truck didn't start until about here on me. I don't understand how this happens. I believe this is the clearest evidence that toxic masculinity in action is just the point where you, oh, your truck just stops being a truck and becomes this, quite frankly, a rolling health hazard to you and everyone else on the road. But enough about that. We've got hit upon something. <clears throat> All right, management, management class. We got. I really think I'm gonna like this class since it's. I think it's it's just really fascinating to me for some reason. I didn't expect to be like this interested in it this early, and uh, that surprised me because like uh, because <clears throat> sorry if I'm talking a little fast through the lights fading, and I don't know how much battery I have left on my camera because I can't tell because the light that tells me if it's recording is broken. So all right, back on track. Like so, we've gone we've gone through like the history of management and the history of industry and working, and so it's like this we've gone from like you know shoveling um, manure and harvesting crops to working in big factories to you know typing and typewriters, and now we're on the everything's on the internet, and now we're in the what, what is no, what he liked to call the creative economy or the idea economy. How like businesses like, they don't quite understand that. And so, like, the old systems are really breaking, and you can see this, like, the old retailers, like, the big giants, like, you know, a JCPenney, uh, Sears, I just realized, I, I don't think the kids that are growing up now even know what a Sears is, which is weird. Like, your big department stores, those are kind of going away, because they're all, they're all being taken out, uh, by Amazon, and the internet is just coming for them, because, like, in the creative economy, like, tr like the traditional business structure sort of breaks down, and which is... Because like everyone can do be their own sort of manager and and can like doesn't need that sort of traditional top-down leadership. And speaking of the creative economy, uh, a friend of mine has opened up their own Redbubble store and they asked me to buy some stuff for them. And I said no, but what I decided I would do instead is uh, give them a shout out here in the video. But what if you're like screaming into the void at your screens and like what but what are they selling? What kind of products do they sell? Well, here they are. Look at that design. Look at the other design. We only have two up at the moment, but as you can see, as you on this web page, uh, we have a variety of options. Yeah, I put links in the description, so go check them out. Although my favorite thing about management class, especially on Thursday, was we're sitting in there. He's he's lecturing, you know. And I look over, just like is it some kind of weird meme? It's like there's a guy on his phone just sitting there watching Family Guy clips. Not not episodes, I could tell. He's, he's just watching like the funny clip comp compilations on YouTube. And in my mind I'm thinking, if you wanted to pay an obscene amount of money to watch Family Guy, you don't need to do that in, in a college class. You can just, you know, pay Comcast and they'll take care of that for you. <laughs> now, I wish I could say I was as enthusiastic about the physics class because it is really, really boring. Like, incredibly so. And I, I don't think it's the fault of the teacher. I'm, I don't, I don't know what it is, but I think it just really has to do with like, the level of the material. Like, well, like, like one of the experiments that experiments that we did was, um, uh, you know, like, like one person holds like the rulers, and another person like, doesn't have to like, you know, you know the one where you like drop the ruler and like. Whoever cat and then you like catch it to do do reaction time, you know. Whoa! And it's like that's not college level material, and and it's like it's so tedious.
ideas, and I'm kind of dying in that class, and because of that, and the fact that for whatever reason in the air science building, the air conditioning just doesn't work that great, and it's sort of like, whatever. This will be just something I'm going to have to deal with uh, for the rest of the semester. But it's not too bad, nothing that I can't manage, although it's not all bad, I guess. I mean, people seem, yeah, no, it's like, even in, um, even in that class, like, like people, I, again, someone else is was watching Family Guy clips on their phone in physics, too, so it's like, I don't know what it is. It's, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm seeing a pattern where there isn't any, but what is with the connection between Family Guy clip montages and not paying attention in class. Because, from the way I understand it, Family Guy is the exact opposite of learning. Like, if the more you watch Family Guy, the, the less you remember from school. So if you ever wanted to forget something you learned in school, just watch some Family Guy, I guess, because that's the only explanation I can have. Art. Yeah, I forgot. My art, my art class. Uh, the only really interesting thing uh, in that class was one of the statues that we had to look at. Um, the hat. I can show you looks very suspect. I'm just gonna highlight that for you right here. Yeah, it's, it's humorous to me and no one else, although hopefully that doesn't get me in trouble. Quick second, just check how long have I been talking? <clears throat> I would like to end with, by uh, sending out my thoughts and prayers uh, to those in the, involved in the cleanup and the recovery after Hurricane Harvey. Again, I've put some links down below for some local charities you can donate to. Like, the, the level of devastation there is truly uh, shocking. So I just want to let the people there know, if, if even, they're probably never going to see this, but I just want, if someone happens to see this, that, you know, I, I can't understand. Because here in Florida, we're, we're semi-used to sort of having to deal with these sort of deadly storms. And uh, all I can do is implore that once we've rebuilt, that we learn prepare better and take more proactive stance in dealing with these storms which in all likelihood will be getting a little harder to understand and predict as the climate changes around us. Uh, thank you for watching and I guess I'll be back next week. Who knows?